Hello, and welcome to our show for the love of animals here in Paducah, Kentucky. We're so glad you, enjoy, you joined us today. I'm Darlene Pigford. And I'm Greg Bauer. And we've got one of our little friends today, oh, yes. Mr. Wicket, that uh, Angie decided she'd take the afternoon off and sleep. So, sleep uh, at home. Yeah. <laughs> I want to tell our viewers about a couple of upcoming shows. Okay. Uh, one on cat behavior, and that may be more than one show. We're not sure yet on that. Oh, and yes. Also, one with the Paducah Dog Park. Oh, wow. How interesting. So, well, and you said now, Darlene, we had something really neat oh, today. We got something really bad for you today, Greg. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> we have a very interesting show about bats and an Eagle Scout Award. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you introduce our guest, I'll Greg? be happy to. Uh, to Darlene's right, uh, toward the end, is uh, Kim Hagen, who is a cub master uh -huh. and uh, did help uh, with uh, Brandon Hayes, our other guest, who worked on his Eagle Scout project with bats and oh. building bat houses. And so we're in for a real education oh, today, Darlene. Oh, yes we are. And so... Uh, Brandon, t uh, t tell us, I see all of those uh, badges on there. Tell yep. me about the animal related ones. Um, okay. On here I've got different ones as mammal study and there's reptile study that you can go through, um, bird study, um, What's some more animal related? Wildlife right? conservation. Wildlife, wildlife conservation, ecology, um, soil, and water. soil and water. Oh my goodness. And there's just it's a lot of nature related badges out oh, there. That, that's did, wonderful. did you have a favorite one in that area particularly? Um, probably uh, mammal study. Okay. Because this relates not only to wildlife but the pets that we have at home. Oh. So it kind of gives you a wider view of not mm -hmm. just the wildlife. Okay. Well, tell us about your fur family that you might have at home, your pets. Um, I have one pet at home, a um, toy fox terrier. Uh -huh. His name's Sparky, uh -huh. and it's extremely wild and hyper. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, it's great to have around, so uh, it's a lot of fun. Okay. And where is home? Um, I live in Draftonville, Kentucky. Uh-huh. It's just outside of Benton. Outside so. of Benton, Kentucky, okay. okay. And uh, Kim, uh, we also know that you are a licensed to wildlife rehabilitator. Exactly what does that mean? Uh, a licensed rehabilitator is for the state of Kentucky is someone who can rehabilitate mammals, reptiles, and amphibians. Mm -hmm. so. so in other words if we find uh, an injured animal out in the woods, say a wild one or something like that, rather than us trying to pick Bring up that home. animal and do <laughs> something with it, then they could call you. You can go to the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife website and they have a list of rehabbers for your area uh -huh. and find the name of the person who can handle that type of animal and give them a call and they'll come pick them up for you, yes. So you're a raccoon expert also. I've had a few uh, <laughs> moments with raccoons, yes. <laughs> don't, don't leave your pet food out at night because no. you know what will happen even when you live in the city like we do. <laughs> they love the city. Oh, they raccoons do. are city dwellers. So, well, now, Brandon, let's zero in on, on your Eagle Scout project. Briefly, in a sentence, so tell us what was the project that you did for your Eagle Scout award? Okay. Um, for the project, I did bat houses for Mike Miller Park in Benton. Okay. And the park is a local park that's funded through the Marshall County Parks Department. Oh, okay. And we did 10 bat houses and we placed them on telephone poles that were donated to us. And then we built an 11th one for them to keep as an extra in case something happened to one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. All right. Now, and, wh and why? Tell me why the bat houses were important to be put on these 10 telephone poles. Um, the bats are flying animals, so uh -huh. the, higher, the average height for the animals, for them to nest in comfortably, is 10 to 15 feet. Okay. So it was kind of a challenge to get them up there on trees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we figured telephone poles, we can put them on the ground, lift them up. Oh, and it I gives see. them that aerial view that they're used to. Yeah, but why, why did you need the bat houses to start with? I mean, what, what, what um, purpose did they serve? The main complaint that the parks has been getting, the park system, was mosquitoes, and bats feast on mosquitoes. Okay, all right, all right. But uh, also, I think bats also are just important to our ecology, is that right? Yes. Okay, Very I was reading, so. reading that they, what, spread seeds and uh, 
pollinate uh, mm -hmm. flowers. So they're very, they would be very important in the plant and the crop cycle yes. also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so th that was your Eagle Scout project. I'm very curious, who dug the holes for those telephone poles? <laughs> the Parks Department did that for us. <laughs> okay. They uh, have a tractor that they... I would think so, because that's mm -hmm. a big task. Okay, all right. Uh, show me a bat house before we uh, continue here. All right. Well, this is the 11th one we built for the parks here. Okay. And as you can see here on the end, it's got the entrance down there. All right, so that's where the bats would yes. go in. Okay. Yeah. And that's actually the bottom there, and this face outward here. This will face out on the pole. And okay. they just go up in here and cling onto the tar paper. Okay, and the there. tar paper that you mean is on the inside? Yes. Okay, now tell me again, which side goes up against the telephone pole? The, It'll oh, the, on the like other that. side. Yeah, okay. like that. I got you. Yeah. Oh. Now, how many bats can inhabit a bird uh, a house at one time? <laughs> um, it just kind of depends on their size. Each species is different, mm -hmm. and depending on the size and their actions towards each other, uh -huh. some species get along more than others, and it's all territorial in a way. Mm -hmm. So, just depending on what bats are already in there and how accepting they are. So. Okay. Okay. Well, and it, could it be young and old bats, male and female? Yeah. I mean, like colonies or groups, I don't yes. know how yes, they you, live in colonies. They, they do live mm -hmm. in colonies, okay, and that's mm -hmm. where they have their young and everything? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well now, the, the, the bats, what's the approximate size of a bat? I know it's kind of hard to tell, uh, but say in oh, a, a diameter or something yeah. like that, because I, I think um, of bats as being a fairly large I think uh, of being, they're animal. small, aren't they? Yes, they're yes. very small. They're small. smaller than wicked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but with their wings spread out, it, they would be? Their bodies can be from three and a half to five inches long. Okay. So okay. that would give them a wingspan of probably eight to 12 inches, some okay. of them. And that may be a little larger than, than average, because most, most of the bats in Kentucky are very small bats. Mm. Okay, so you get a lot of them in that bat house, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Okay. Be a, a lot. Be a family reunion. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, gosh. Um, the, the other thing that I was wondering is, um, obviously, they eat mosquitoes and they're they're good for the environment. Bats have a bad rap. Yeah. <laughs> Why do bats have a bad rap? For their their shape or their uh, what they look like or just why? Um, bats are get the bad rap they do because they're nocturnal creatures, they come out at night, mm -hmm. and the bugs that they eat fly close to eye level, so you'll see them swoop down right in front of oh. you and you won't expect them, okay. so they'll scare you. And then they've gotten a bad rap from like different movies and such, <laughs> like Hollywood, <laughs> they kind of demented their view of things, so, mm -hmm. but they're really not that bad of creatures. They're, they try to stay away from humans as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Anything bigger than them, they try to stay away from. And they're strictly nocturnal creatures, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, so they're going to be them. sleeping during the day. Yeah. Yes. In, in something like that. As you mentioned, Hollywood, with all due respect to Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we're just getting things yes, started getting here a started. little bit. And, uh, but we'd like to take a short break right now to listen to a happy tale about Lucy, a wonderful little cat, and her owner, Josh. And right. Hmm? Josh Randalls. Josh Randalls. And uh, so give a listen and we'll be right back. This is a happy tale about Josh and Lucy. Josh went to the McCracken County Animal Shelter in search of a kitten. There were so many to choose from. He pulled the kitten out and was holding it when he glanced over and saw a gray cat in one of the crates. He asked the office manager, how long has that cat been living in a crate? The manager replied, about six months. Josh put the kitten away and told her, that's the cat I want. No cat deserves to live in a crate for that long. He immediately adopted Lucy and said that she'll never live inside another crate again. When the shelter first got Lucy, she was kind of a mean cat. She must have reacted that way because she was so scared. Lucy is now spoiled rotten, has the run of the house and all the food she can eat. She also has lots and lots of toys. But her favorite thing is all the cuddle time that she gets from Josh. 
Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that little tale about Lucy. And uh, talk about a heartwarming oh, story. Yes. That That is just exactly what it is. The first thing we do before we return well. to our discussion is we'd like to remind our viewers that you can also see our show on the web at www.paducah2.org forward slash video clips, all one word, no space, forward slash animals. And most of the shows now are also out on YouTube. That's right. So you have plenty of ways that you can see us if you happen to miss uh, the, uh, the Channel 2 uh, viewing of the shows in, in our area in Comcast. And so. I'd like to remind our, vi our viewers in our area to pick up Pause for a Clause. And on the front page of this issue happens to be a picture of Lucy. Oh, so yes. Lucy's getting to be, getting quite the publicity. <laughs> and uh, I can understand, you know, going from a box to a wonderful home. Um, I, I imagine she's a joyous cat. And we're so glad that Josh is taking good care of her. Yes. Now, Brandon, let's go, uh, take a, a closer examination of, of the bat house. Uh, sure. What kind of material do you use to construct it? And, and um, it, it's a very large house. Yes. Um, and so well, what are some of the particulars that you had to be aware of in building a bat house as opposed, say, to building a, a normal bird house as we think of them? Um, each of these boards on the, s on the inside here, uh -huh. they've mm -hmm. got to be spaced with room for the bats to climb up in there. Okay. And then this is made of cedar, so it won't have to worry about any erosion or corrosion mm -hmm. or okay. any of that sort of environmental factor. But you had to be aware of not only where you were screwing these, but with the bats, they're really touchy on holes and stuff. Okay. So we had to go through and get all the seams cocked up with outdoor cock and all the screws and such mm -hmm. because they're so touchy with the light. So. Okay, so you had to make sure there was no leak of any kind yes. that would let light in. Yes. Tell us a little more about the interior of it and what it's made of. Um, the interior is the same cedar planks on the inside. Okay. But it's got a one inch spacing between each plank. And with the plank, there's tar paper on the inside that's okay. just nailed to each plank on each side. And they'll go up in there and cling onto that there, so. Okay, mm -hmm. now on the interior, are we talking, does it just have the four sides or is it divided on the inside, on the interior? It's divided with different planks. There's. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's four sections inside each one. And there's, and the, there's tar paper on each side of those planks? Yes. Oh. So they can crawl up in between each plank here. Oh, that and is a small animal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, now how do they, how do they cling to it? Um, they've got claws on the bottom of their feet are claws and their other arms are wings, so uh -huh. they'll crawl in, they'll fly in and grab on with their claws and they'll climb up higher into it as far as they can get and then they'll hang there okay. upside down, preferably. And it's the tar paper and their claws that keeps them yes. hanging upside down. I mean, any particular reason why they're hanging upside down? I mean, is that just the way they are? Or <laughs> um, Probably for takeoff. I would assume so they because they can just drop right down mm -hmm. and go with it. Oh, okay. I mean, like they see it in the movies, you drop down. Mm -hmm. not really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's similar to uh, some of the other uh, animals, like a, a sloth, or uh, that will hang from a tree upside down, mm -hmm. wrapped yes. with their wrapped around it, so they can get to the ground quickly. So. What do what do bats? Uh, they eat insects. Anything else? Um, they tend to eat mainly just mosquitoes, but they eat almost anything else. Um, mm -hmm. Up to three times their body weight, I think it is, a night, depending on how far they have to fly. Ooh. Mm -hmm. All right, and where do they get water? Or do they, I um, assume they need water. Just wherever, most bugs hover around a central port where there's either people oh, that's or right. water. Our water. So while they're there, they can pick it up. All right, so we'd have a lot of mosquitoes around our lake area, wouldn't we? Yes. <laughs> and so this is important around here. <laughs> And look back to your bat house. How okay. much time and money does it take to produce a good functional bat house? Um, the whole project all together, we had separate days to build them. We uh -huh. had one day to build them and one day to put them on poles. Mm -hmm. And we had about 200 hours of labor combined from each individual person. But it'll take you 45 minutes to put one together maybe. If you know what you're doing. Yes, <laughs> okay. and you can call the, the wildlife department will send you plans, and they sent me this for different bird houses and bird houses. And what's and the stuff. name of that they sent you? Um, Woodworking for Wildlife, Homes for Birds and Wildlife. Okay, oh, so. 
Which, which leads to the question, tell us about how you got the information in addition to this, to, to, to gather all this information about bats and you know, how, how are you going to do this project? Um, I originally started talking to the Marshall County Wildlife Department uh -huh. there in Benton and they put me in contact with a conservation officer in their unit and he wasn't a trained with the bats, right. he was more of a fish and wildlife uh -huh. conservation officer. So he put me in contact with a bat biologist in Frankfurt. Oh my goodness, I didn't know office. there was such a thing. <laughs> okay. I didn't either until I found out about him. So, <laughs> But he, was, he walked me through all the steps and sent me this packet of information on bats and said this is everything you basically need to know for your bat house project. Um, if you have any questions, give me a call. So. Right. Mm -hmm. What was the gentleman's name? Or the, the, do you remember? I, um, okay, well, anyway, we'll <laughs> give credit to the, yeah. to the bat <laughs> biologist. <laughs> w w one of the things I wonder also now is n now that you've built the bat house, what kind of maintenance is required on it to keep it um, functional? Almost none. Um, just someone to check them every now and then after big storms and mm -hmm. such since they're high in the air to make sure none of them have fallen down or anything like that. That's about well, uh, the only maintenance. And since it's cedar wood, it's not likely to disintegrate in the weather. Yes. Uh, and that sort of thing. Okay. Does it have a protective coating, paint, or is it just just plain? It's just the cedar. Yeah, just the plain mm -hmm. cedar. Yeah, okay. You'd, you'd want that, I think. And if I were in an area, let's say, how many bad houses would I put in a particular area? In other words, how many bad houses would be too much? How many bad houses would be about enough? Um, the or too small. Mike Miller itself has 88 acres on its property. Mm -hmm. um, now that's the park. Yes, that's okay. the park. Mike okay. Miller Park. And they, I put 10 bat houses in there and spaced them out. Okay. But that was on the max side of the number. Okay. For, so they said about one for every eight to 10 acres, just depending. Oh, so. okay. And does the area that you put them have to be wooded? Now, obviously you put them on telephone poles, but do, do, is it better to have a lot of trees around it or an open space or does it matter? Um, they need open space to take flight. Yes. Okay. So they're better to be put either on a building or on a pole would be better for their habitat okay. because when they drop out, they, they actually swoop. Yeah. Yes, they need clearance to take off. All right, so you wouldn't put it with, with a lot of tree branches like right. some other animals need the cover, yeah. but the bats would, would yeah. not. Okay. Plus predators can climb trees and they can get the bats. But uh, predators yeah. can, pl can climb um, poles. How do you keep? But Usually you're not going to be, a predator's not going to be out in the open climbing a pole, oh, whereas open. a tree, gotcha. they're covered in the leaves. Yeah. And gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so All camouflaged. right. Which brings the question, what types of uh, animals would be predators? Uh, owls. Okay. okay. Raccoons, possums, anything Hawks. that has, yes. Claws. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Hawks probably less because they hunt during the day, but late afternoon could be a, could be a, a challenge yeah. too. Oh. Okay. Is, um, it, is the mosquito population decreased in the area yet? Um, <laughs> working on it. <laughs> working on it. <laughs> I'm sure it would take a little bit of time to, yeah. to mm. you know, to, to see, you know, how how quickly this is going to be effective. So. so they told me it would take about a year for the bats to oh, really? fully get acquainted to all the houses and get mm -hmm. fully moved into them. Okay. So. okay. Now I understand. You know, you'll be go going to college. In fact, tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, well, how will people keep an eye on on this project or will you? Hi. Um, locally for me I'll only be an hour away. Oh that's so, good. And I'll have free time uh, hopefully. Hopefully. To uh, <laughs> come up here every now and then and check on them and mm -hmm. keep tally of how many are in there. See, see how, how it's going how and, it, yes. and maybe the, if there's overcrowding you know you might have to add an addition to the bat house or something. In other words <laughs> Yes. Hopefully you'll have a lot of bats yeah. and fewer mosquitoes, right? Hopefully. <laughs> I, I know our viewers are getting a real education. I know I am. Uh, listen, just <laughs> I knew nothing about bats. The only thing I remember is when one got under the tarp of our pontoon, and that scared mm -hmm. me. You know, that was and I said, that that was enough. I think a, a bat did get in an attic one time in an mm -hmm. older home. So we want to take a short break now. Okay. And. Uh, listen to another happy tale and this is one about a dog named Gretchen and it's it's just such a wonderful story we know that you'll enjoy it so give a listen 
Gretchen was pregnant while she was at the Humane Society. She was taken by the healing place and creatures great and small found her a foster home. Sadly, Gretchen delivered her puppies, but they did not survive. While recuperating, creatures rescued another dog, a St. Bernard who was also pregnant, but she had a problem with her delivery. She couldn't nurse any of her babies, so they gave them all to Gretchen. Gretchen spent the next two months caring for all nine puppies. When she was done, she began to go to adoption events, but she was always overlooked. Thankfully, when her picture appeared on the covers of Paws for a Cause, and her new mommy read the story, and fell in love with Gretchen, she was finally able to find her forever home. Welcome back. We hope that you really enjoyed that uh, little story about Gretchen and and uh, just what it shows what different kinds of animals can oh, do yes. to help each other and uh, it's just a wonderful story. This afternoon we we're, we're talking with um, uh, Kim Hagen and Brandon Hayes about bats and just getting a real education so far. And, yes, uh, and uh, it's a, this bat project of putting bat houses in one of the local parks mm -hmm. in order to help with uh, the bats eat the mosquitoes uh, is an Eagle Scout project, which is mm -hmm. in itself uh, quite a feat uh, which Brand Brandon has earned. Brandon, which leads us to, to the question, what advice would you give to your fellow uh, scouts about becoming an Eagle Scout? Um, don't give up and get distracted. There's <laughs> opportunities out there, so on okay. your to do a project, there's always people looking for some community service somewhere. So, mm -hmm. okay. How did you find this project? Um, originally, I was going to do handicap swings for the park. Uh huh. Okay. I had been in contact with the parks manager at the time, and that's something they had been looking forward to. But that was something that, with insurance and risk, that okay. we couldn't Insu right. do. So, we looked at we looked at our options and thought about it and brainstormed and came up with bats since they feast on the mosquitoes, mm -hmm. get the population right. down, maybe people will start coming back to the park more often. So, Do you see maybe a future uh, Boy Scout doing something similar to what you're doing or extending your project? In other words, building on the work that you have done? Um, yeah, I mean, bat houses are great and they're, you can put them just about anywhere as long as there's a space for them to take off so they can find them and do that for a community service project almost anywhere as long as the people are willing. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you read in the paper here in Paducah about our riverfront project, the Indiana bat, which I understand uh, is endangered, is in the trees and they're going to have to take the trees down for the riverfront project, but then the bats have to have a home so they are allocating money to take care of these endangered species. So knowledge of bat houses could be a very uh, uh, good thing to have. So mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell us, uh, Kim, any more about the, uh, bat species in Kentucky and what their status is? Uh, we have about six bats that, that are main visitors to our state. Uh -huh. uh, and then we have probably another seven different species that come through at different times. Uh, oh. The Indiana bat is one of those. Okay. Uh, overall in the United States there are six bat populations that are on the extinct list uh -huh. and there's another 20 species that are on the, the special watch Ooh. list. Okay. Um, well, well then the, the, the bats, do they migrate like the birds? Um, or do or they, they, they must move around. Cause they, they actually hibernate and mm, okay. but, but they we have scattered little colonies of of different bats. Different bats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know anything about it except when we were doing this show I happened to pick up uh, a National Geographic of I think it was December 2010 and there was a wonderful article that that you have there about bats uh, in this area mm -hmm. and in fact it has some beautiful pictures of them. In fact they look <laughs> nice with their big uh, wingspan. Well, they're, they're very impressive. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very impressive bird. Oh yes it is. Uh, um, I guess it is a bird then. Is it, is no, it, uh, it's a mammal. It's a flying mammal. It's a flying oh, mammal. mammal. Okay. Yes. Okay, we have to get our biology straight. <laughs> yeah, I know it. <laughs> that was never my long suit. <laughs> and Brandon, as an Eagle Scout, uh, who would you like to thank uh, out there that helped you get to this project and complete this project in scouting? Um, just the different scout leaders I've had throughout the years. Um, Ken's been there. 
for us. So, And then my youth leader at church, he's the one that got the telephone poles da donated to us. Oh, that's park. A, all right. So for letting us go in and do the project at the park. So. Uh -huh. And what, what troop are you from? I'm in Troop 422. It's uh -huh. out of Sharp, Kentucky. So. Out of Sharp, Kentucky. And Sharp, Kentucky is near what? For um, Reedland. Near Le mm -hmm. Reedland. It's on Re the Marshall County border with McCracken. My, okay, gotcha. All right. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to get more information about scouting and bats, where would I go? Um, there's a, there's a. You could well, contact the Lincoln Heritage um, That's Council. They're okay. out of Louisville, but they are our, also our Scout Council. Okay. Uh, you can find them online. Just punch it into your your, res your searcher, and and they should pop up. Okay, good. We got Boy Scouts and hopefully Girl Scouts are all mm -hmm. over. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a marvelous project. Yes. I know it, it will benefit our local area, and the knowledge that you have helped you gain uh, your uh, Eagle Scout Award, and we want to say publicly here on TV how proud we are of you for this accomplishment mm -hmm. and for working hard and long hours to and achieve it. And that it's anything that we can do to help our ecology oh, yeah, is, and is very, very important, I think, and uh, sometimes I think people kind of forget that about the environment around us, but the more we can do to foster the... Uh, uh, the environment. The, the duration or the What's the word I want to use? Uh, to keep the environment going, uh, I guess. To keep uh, that's this very planet important. healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. so I think even though the name of our show is for the love of animals, it's also for the love of this land also. Well, <laughs> absolutely. Well, because the animals inhabit that's right. the land. That's right. Mm -hmm. and they're they go together. So. So. so I will kind of put bats in my... I like you and what you're doing, but you stay in your house and I'll stay in mine. <laughs> but I think I'm a little more educated now, well, and I'll try not. If one comes my way, I'll, uh, um, I'll, I'll try to stay out of its way. Maybe we should have some in our backyard to take care of mosquitoes. <laughs> hey, that is a thought. <laughs> they can go with our neighborhood raccoon and possum, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. exactly. Uh, and all the other critters uh, yes. that we have. Well, it's uh, almost time to close here. Oh, I know. Time and, passes um, when you're having fun. Oh, absolutely. Kim, is there anything that you'd like to add for us this afternoon? In scouting or related? Um, the number one reason that the bat population's in decline is because of the habitat. They need more habitat. So um, follow in Brandon's footsteps and, and buy you a bat house or build a bat house. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, we'd like to thank you, Kim and Brandon, oh, so yes. much for taking time out of your busy schedules and, and uh, sharing with us this afternoon a great deal of wonderful information about bats. I know I've learned an awful oh, lot. I, I have, too. I have, I have a lot more respect for bats than I, than I well, used yeah, to. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> their place in the ecology. Absolutely. So, well, Darlene, it's I, time. To, it's that time again. Yeah, I just can't believe, you, uh, you know, time just seems to pass mm -hmm. uh, so quickly on this mm -hmm. show. So, I'm Darlene. And I'm Greg. And Wanting our viewers to remember what we tell you every time, give your pet a little extra love today and, and every day. day. See you next time. Put a bat house in your backyard. <laughs> Bye.